J.H. Vice Principal, Episode 5, Past and Present. For, sure, for mature viewers only, viewer discretion is advised. I finally know why I can't get an answer. I finally know why I don't like the number. They keep a secret into their mind. They never send me telling lies. I know a bit of a song. <laughs> Never gets old though. Anyway, let's get into the past and the present. Jay's asked me to get to this by Saturday. Hi, Phoebe. So now it's Saturday. Here it is. Good morning, Phoebe. Morning, Candy. How are you? I'm doing all right. Just the usual, still adjusting to normal school days without you know who bothering me or trying to pick a fight. Hmm. Vice Principal Hubbard really made sure Kevin would get the message. I guess you're right, but part of me just can't seem to get the thought of him possibly coming after me again. Like, he'll break his word when no one is looking. It's or understandable something. to be well, afraid of that. Kevin would have to take a huge gamble if he were to ignore the directions he was given. It's not worth it for him. He'd have to face the consequences. Cause Principal Moonlight and Vice Principal Hubbard would set things straight. True, so, but you know, really teenagers about. are stupid. They might try to risk it anyway. I hope you're right. I just don't want to have a repeat of what happened at my old school. Mm. Yeah, I don't, wouldn't want any of that to happen to you again either. Let's try moving the mic. It's about time you showed up. That's fine. I guess. You seriously need to work out. Oh, just shut it, Owen. So what's so important that you made me drag my ass all the way out here early before school started? We wanted to prove there was a black kid on the show. I need you to send a message to Phoebe Perez for me. I want to make sure that she is the first one to know that I'm the one that's going to start taking charge of the sophomore class. No, and that she should sake. start watching herself. I can't say it to her face to face myself though. Because Vice Principal Hubbard warned me that I have to keep my distance from Phoebe for well, the time Well, at least he's listening to that. Talk about lack on having a set of balls. You shouldn't have to worry about what Vice Principal Hubbard says regarding what the consequences will be if you try fighting with Perez again. Not only do you not have the balls, Kevin, you're fucking soft and have no spine. However, you just say I'm to me? in a generous mood today, so I'll be nice, do you a solid, and make sure that your message gets through to Phoebe. Thank I already you. have to serve after school detention later this afternoon anyway. I'll take the fall for you on this one. Thanks, man. Mm. I owe you one. I'll talk to Perez during lunch. One more thing. Resort to choking Phoebe if you have to get the message through to her. Not fucking around. I'm so glad to be done with English class. I can't wait to get to the lunchroom and meet up with Candy. Okay, oh. Excuse me, but you're in the way. Sorry, but I ain't moving. You're staying put for a bit. No, I need to get to lunch with my friend. Can you please move? I don't want to tell Principal Moonlight on you, but I will if I need to. Oh, you're not going anywhere. Can't breathe. Let me go. You shut up and listen to me first, then I'll release you. Listen good, because I'm going to say it only one time. Say anything or interrupt me, and I will tighten the grip. Now, Can't I believe breathe. you are familiar with Mr. Kevin Cross, correct? Well, you better start getting used to what he says, because he's now the boss in charge of the sophomore class. He's going to start laying down the law to you and the others in the class. And if you dare try and refuse to do so, well, then things will become very dire for you. And to others who want to try and disobey. So be careful, Phoebe Perez. You have been warned. <coughs> Phoebe. PTSD is triggered. Jessica. I need help. Someone please help me. Whoa, whoa. Slow down, Miss Perez. Please, I need you to take a deep breath and tell me what is the matter. 
I need Vice Principal Hubbard or Principal Moonlight immediately Ms. Anderson. A student just put his hands on me and was firmly trying to choke me around my neck. Yeah, good reaction. I just got done speaking with the school nurse. Phoebe is stable, but the poor girl is terribly shaken up and scared from the experience. Naturally. It's a good thing Phoebe gave us information about what happened. Hmm. But my word, did it sound graphic. Her parents should yeah. also be arriving shortly. All right, Jessica. Jace, I'll need you to fill Phoebe's parents in on the incident. In the meantime, Security Ballard and I are heading to the gymnasium to get Kevin. We may not know who Phoebe's attacker is, but we know that they were put up to it by him. Hmm. Kevin crossed the line, and he will pay for it. I swear, Kevin is getting more bolder, and more hmm. stupider. Right? Yeah, right. They tr obviously, Excuse they track me. it back to you. We're looking for our daughter. You two must be Mr. and Mrs. Perez. We are. Where's our daughter? Well, I don't think we ever saw Phoebe's Can parents in the school bus, so it makes sense they had to make some If off. you both would be so kind, follow me to my office. We can talk in there, and I'll explain the details and answer any questions you may have about Phoebe. Is our daughter okay? Yes, Mrs. Perez, she is. Our school nurse will be wrapping up very soon looking after Phoebe, certain that she's in stable condition. What happened to her? From what information we could gather, it sounded pretty graphic. Someone grabbed Phoebe directly at her throat, and made her unable to breathe, while he was saying some kind of message to her. He yeah, that'd be a good Phoebe reaction. Go and took off. The experience itself made Phoebe so scared, that she ran straight into the office. It's obvious that she was the target, of some serious form of bullying. Which, me and Principal Moonlight know that Phoebe has experienced before. Sadly. And we may not know who the attacker is, but we know the person who put them up to it. We did everything we could for Phoebe. But even after we tried to protect her from bullying, things have just ended up the same as they were before at her old school. Mm. I don't want to feel like that as her parents, we failed her again. Don't be hard on yourself, Mr. Perez. Me, personally, I don't think you and your wife are to be blamed. You both have done everything you can for Phoebe. Whether it was trying your best to protect her, or there for her when she needed it the most. Right now I'm looking at two parents, who are not neglectful to their child, but are always looking out for their daughter, and her best interests. That's right. What concerns me and Principal Moonlight though, is that after this incident, how much longer Phoebe is willing to hold back from talking about her past at her old school, using her own words. I did agree with her that it was best to let her take all the time she needed, until she felt ready to talk about it. But after what she just went through, the level of concern that we have for Phoebe's safety has dramatically increased. Mm. Is there anything, anything at all? that you two can share with me regarding Phoebe's history from back then. Phoebe was always pretty descriptive to us if anything went wrong at her old school. Mm. Just listening to what kind of bullying she was going through made me want to beat the shit out of those bullies doing harm to her, <laughs> especially when her old school didn't do anything to resolve the problem. I was disgusted at how neglectful they were. I wanted to fucking scream. If I wasn't there to calm my wife down, she would have made the wrong move. If only something had been done by the school, then Phoebe wouldn't have had to suffer as badly as she has. But because they didn't, things just went from bad to worse for her. It hit the hardest when she found out what happened to poor Riley. Who's Riley? Yeah. We better tell him. Riley was a friend of Phoebe's. Oh, geez. Who He's ended up taking her life. own life yep. because of the same kind of bullying Phoebe went through, but much worse. It's true. Phoebe. Phoebe. It's all true. Riley was my former friend. The one who took her own life because of the same people who targeted me. Oh, sweetheart, come here.
It's okay, honey. You still wish she was here. We all do. I really wish I could see her again. That she was still alive. Vice Principal Hubbard. I think I'm ready to finally tell my story. And I'd like Cassandra to be here as well, if that's okay. She is in her choir class. However, I'm sure Mrs. Ballard won't mind. We all know why we are here. Phoebe, before we go through with this, are you absolutely sure you're ready? Yes, Vice Principal Hubbard, I'm sure. And let's hear it. Then go right ahead. We're all here for you. Mm. Well, it's like this. You see. When I was little, Aww. I was by myself out on the school playground. It was my first day of kindergarten, and I was too shy to make any friends. And being an only child, things for me were made a little extra hard. Mm. But then... You look like you could use a friend. That was the day I met Riley for the first time. One thing eventually led to another. And before we knew it, we became friends. Years passed, and Riley and I maintained our friendship through thick and thin. Sixth grade for us eventually rolled around. Unfortunately, things got too thick. Little did we know what was coming next. That year, we met this stuck-up sixth grade brat, named Paige. <sighs> she came up to us, and started teasing me for no reason. This but is Riley my house, bitch. She stood up for me and told Paige off, telling her to leave me alone, or she would go through her. Paige was so pissed that she gave us a warning that she was going to make our school years hell, and then she walked away. Paige made good on her threat. She started telling lies and spreading rumors online, and soon she had lots of other kids targeting both me and Riley. Before long, we found ourselves as victims of constant bullying, but even with so many kids wrapped around Paige's finger, that didn't stop Riley from standing her ground. She wasn't afraid to keep telling Paige off, and that she was nothing but someone who uses others to do her bidding. Good. Riley promised me that we'd get through Paige's nonsense, together, and that there was nothing I had to be afraid of. Paige was getting more and more pissed off with Riley every time she learned that Riley was still firmly standing her ground against yeah, her. Of course. In her mental state, she was on a mission to be victorious, and that meant even if she had to go too far, she would get her way. And she went too far. Then one day, during the last week of school, Riley never turned up. At first, I thought maybe she was sick. But then I was asked over the intercom to go to the principal's office. Oh, this is Once the there, learn. I learned the devastating news. Riley was found in her bedroom closet. She had hung herself. Jesus. That's when I also learned that, in addition to what was going on at school, Riley had been the target of serious cyberbullying online by Paige and her Turn kids. the phone off. What was found on the phone were messages that were so serious that it made even the police sick to their stomachs. Jesus. I was devastated that I would never see my best friend again. So devastated that I started having thoughts of committing suicide too. But part of me knew that that wouldn't be what Riley wanted. No. She would have wanted me to continue living my life the best that I could. So you see, that's what happened. My mom and dad pulled me out of school and they homeschooled me for the next couple of years, looking after me and making sure that I was okay. I didn't go back to actual school until the ninth grade. The only good thing that I guess could possibly come out of this story is that after Riley's death, the reputation that Paige once had was completely destroyed, and everyone turned on her. No matter how much her parents tried shielding their daughter, or justifying that she didn't mean to overstep. Oh no, she meant what she was doing. Face, because Paige knew damn well what she was exactly. doing. Exactly. I haven't seen her since the day I found out Riley committed suicide. Even now, Paige still disgusts me. Reasonably that so. That bitch is still alive and breathing. Well, you don't know that. While Riley is gone. She'll never come back.
Phoebe, I'm so sorry. Actually, I'm more than so sorry that you had to go through that experience back then. Thanks, Candy. Mr. and Mrs. Perez, you can take Phoebe home now. And Cassandra, you can return to class. I think I speak for us all when I say that we've heard what we needed to hear. And Phoebe. I'm sorry. What you just said will not be going unnoticed mm. or easily tossed aside like it's nothing important. This is as serious as it gets. Yeah. Principal Moonlight and I will be looking further into your situation and taking whatever actions we can to help you. So that's what happened to Phoebe. Unfortunately, yes. The poor thing. Phoebe's old school failed her. We won't Big make time. the same mistake. Agreed. So, how did you punish Kevin? I'm glad that you asked. Kevin will be suspended for the next one to two weeks. And when he does come back to school, he will begin serving after school detention twice a week. Mm. Want to know what I said to Jessica just after you left? I said to her, that Kevin is getting more bolder, and more stupider. That's exactly what I was thinking. I thought for sure he would have learned his lesson, especially after that one time when he used the girls' bathroom. Oh yeah. I remember that incident. Really? Now that was really stupid of Kevin. Yeah. Should have used a non-binary bathroom. Kidding. Christ. See visions of the sea to fly so high as you could be. It's always the ones that give the happiest of smiles that have the biggest of demons. <clears throat> this is what bullies are like though. They can't stand anyone defying them. Tyrants are like that. So when you stand up, you're their primary target and they'll do anything that they can to destroy you. <sighs> Unfortunately. She destroyed herself in the end. Paige is a monster. But for some reason I get the feeling this isn't the last we'll see of her. I don't know for sure, mind you. I'm not the writer of the show. I just think that it's there's a potential that it'll come that she might return in the series. Probably not as a character main character or anything like getting rolled in the school or anything like that, but you know, you never know. She's out there somewhere, probably. You know, I think I, I always think there's gonna be like a one percent chance that it happen. Anyway, yeah. <sighs> Rest in peace, Riley. You are an amazing person. You didn't deserve this. Nobody deserves death. Well, nobody good deserves death. You can argue about bad people all day, <laughs> but no one, no good person deserves it. Never happened to me. I can't allow it. But yeah, rest in peace to Riley. Later.